Hola! Hey, Mr. War oh my goodness, what is that? Oh my god, <laughs> How did that country stuff get on my video? Hey! No! <laughs> hey, welcome aboard my friends. Hey, and what do we have here? Hey, it's a frog! Hey, Froggy, are you the uh, feature, well, amphibian of the week? I think you are. Uh, boy, you're taking up a lot of space there, though, man. Uh, you just kind of, like, took over my page. Let's bring this down here. I still got that country kind of stuck in my head. Ouch, it's hurting my head. All right, guys, let's, let's get started here. I think I can handle you a little bit more at that size. Let's get started, my friends. Welcome to another math video. We're doing some go math here. Lesson 4.3. That's right. And we're looking at multiplication with decimals and whole numbers. Yeehaw. It says the essential question. This is our learning target in essence. Uh, how can you use properties and plays value to multiply a decimal and a whole number? Woohoo! Yay! Well, you know, before we start on with this lesson, I think we need to do something called a little bit of fluency practice. We've never done this before. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me bring this all the way down here. You can kind of see the page. Wow! I know. You're just going, Mr. Wara, you are magical. How do you do that? Uh, I really don't know. It came in a dream. No. We'll put the frog right there. <laughs> Look, he fits perfect. All right. You guys are going to have to move you off the side. Sorry. Don't get to be part of this little thing here. All right, as you can see, we have some a fluency builder here. What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, practice this. And what I would recommend that you do, okay, there's absolutely no way I can make sure that you do this. So we are on the honor system, which means basically you're just going to be truthful to yourself. But you could practice this first without me, and then you could go ahead and see how you did. Uh, no, we don't have zero. We have 4.5. Here we have 100. Oh, that's just 45. Coming over here. Yes, that's just the identity property. Okay, so that's going to be this. And that's going to be, ooh, times. We're taking times 0.1. That's when we, oh, that's 456.7. And then this one's going to be double that. So it's 45.67. Coming over here. Ooh, that's 8.33. Here we have 83.3. Here we have 833. Here we have 8. 1,330, I believe. One, two, three. I think that's right. Oh, no, not these. Okay, zero to raise. That's just one. That's really just saying 39.2, I believe. And, okay, raise to the first power times 10. That would be 392. And here we have times two. Is that 3,920, I hope? And here, ooh, times 1,000. One, two, three, there's two zeros. Okay. And, okay. I don't know how I did here. Let me see. Let's go back, double check, because if I slow down. Yeah, here this is uh, the identity property. So anything multiplied by one, we know is just that number. So that was uh, fairly easy for starters. And then, of course, multiplying by a power of 10 would move the decimal place one place to the right. So that would be 4.5. I'm agreeing with myself. Here, this is going to be 45. I'm good with that. Then over here, again, identity property here threw me off. I slowed down because it was like we were we were doing the opposite over here. We were taking one-tenth as opposed to times 10. So that decimal place moves actually to the left. And then here it moved twice because we, we had times uh, one-hundredth. Where here, the decimal place was moving this way, just the opposite. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm okay with that because this is just one power of 10 here. This is two, took all the way out. And then here, we end up having to add another zero onto that. And here, yes, good, yep, all right. You know what, I think I actually agree with myself, okay? All right. So first things, it says in 2010, the United States Mint released a newly designed Lincoln penny. A Lincoln penny has a mass of two and a half grams. If there are five Lincoln pennies on a tray, what is the total mass of the pennies? Okay, we need to unlock this. It says, how much does, I'm sorry, how much mass does one penny have? This is helping us out here. And we can see that it tells us right here, yes, 2.5 grams. So let's go ahead and get that down. All righty, yeah. How many pennies are on the tray? Well, I think it says that in the problem too. It says, if there are five Lincoln pennies on a tray, hello it's right there in the problem okay so how many we decided there were five so let's go ahead and put five 
And then finally, it says use grouping language to describe what you are asked to find. Use grouping language to describe what you're asked to find. So this is the key here, the total mass. It's like we're saying, if you think about it, five groups, all right, five groups of the 2.5 which is the mass of each penny. And since we have five on there, that's what they mean by the grouping language. Okay, well, multiply, and then it has here, it says five times 2.5. Estimate the product round, the nearest, round to the nearest whole number. All right, well, we have the five here. They already filled that in for us. So 2.5 to the nearest whole number is going to be three. Remember, five or more, we up the score. Yeah. Five must just love himself so much, right? He's like, I'm five. I'll tell you if you're going to go up or not. Yes, he does. He actually has some say in that. That gives us 15. So that's just our estimate. Kind of important that we look at that because as we start to solve the problem, we'll be able to check our work. Now I'm looking at use the distributive property. I love this property. And some of you are probably thinking, uh, Mr. Wara, I don't really know that property that well. well. Let's go over it again. See, here we have five times 2.5. That's equal to, if we were to take 5 times 2 and then plus 5 times 0. 0.5. So we're doing, we're saying 5 times 2 and then we're going to add whatever 5 times 0. 0.5 is. That's basically the distributive property. Okay, It's allowing us to distribute the, the, the second term, well, sometimes it's more than one term, but one term, uh, in, in, in such a way that we're able to still solve the problem. Uh, rather than doing the algorithm for this, this is another way. Sometimes this comes in handy, the distributive property. And this basically leaves us here, this is just repeating, I guess, five times two plus five times, yeah, this is what I kind of just said, 0 0.5. And then here you can see that's gonna be 10. And that's gonna be 10 plus. And in this case, if we have five of those, that's like five, 10, 15, 20, you can see that's going to be 2.5. You could actually do it, the algorithm, if you needed to. Five, carry the two, that's zero, and that's two. And remember how we used to take that, we would, uh, you know, turn this into tenths or whole numbers first. Well, when you have a decimal place in the factor, um, you need to multiply by 10. Well, then you're going to divide by 10 to put it back into the product that way. That will work. And, of course, that will equal, if you think about it, this is just a power of 10 here, right? Oh, we're adding them. Well, never mind. Scratch that. Delete. Okay. No, that's just 10 plus. So that means it's going to be 12.5. It's getting all excited here. It's getting ready to do something different. Really send you down the wrong road. All right. Anyway, this is another way. So show partial products. Multiply the tenths by five. All right. So if we multiply the tenths by five, we're going to get five, right? Yeah, because that's 25. We're going to carry that too. And then here, um, oh, wait a second. Oops. I'm trying to do it all in one. They don't like that, do they? They don't. Scratch it. So only do that. <laughs> okay. Which is five. And now it's saying multiply the ones by five. Okay. And in that case, that's going to be 10 here. All right. Equals 10 ones or one ten. Okay. And you know what? Here, wait a second. Five times five tenths does equal 25 tenths. I take that back. We should have 25 there. Okay. The little algorithm here it can be kind of confusing. They're breaking the steps down in the way that they are. Add the partial products, okay, because we had 2.5, and then we also had 10. So we're adding those, and then that's going to give us our 12.5, which I was rushing to do. So, Matt Talk, explain how the estimate helps you determine if the answer is reasonable. We kind of talked about it a little bit. It's 12.5. We were looking at that was 15. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. I would say. So five Lincoln pennies have a mass of, we have that total. That's all we're doing. This is like our statement. We're making our statement. Okay. Now this is where too, uh, a mathematical practice could come into play using tools like strategically. Let me go ahead and look at this one here. It's up here. About using tools strategically. I know when to use certain tools to help me explore. In this case, you know, we could have shown this problem by actually drawing the pennies, right? And by showing the pennies two and a half each penny and then show a repeated drawing of that so the five pennies um, and again showing how this problem could be solved again these mathematical practices are are good because there's just eight of them that's right and with these eight mathematical practices it gets us thinking you know 
what can I do that's going to help me with that problem? And I, and I like how they're all stated here. Very, very nice. Okay, but time to move on to the next page. Should we bring the frog with us? Where are you? Come on, froggy. There he is. Froggy's back. Yay. Okay. Now it says use place value patterns. This is having a thickness of 1 and 35 hundredths millimeters. The dime is the thinnest coin produced by the United States Mint. If you stacked eight dimes, what would be the total thickness of the sack? Okay. You know, that's a great, great question here. I'm just kind of, usually they have a picture that goes with all this, don't they? I mean, usually when they have a problem, they usually have a picture. I mean, I don't know what. Oh, it's the frog. You're trying to walk off with the money. Hey, you were hiding the dimes. Nice try, pal. Oh, man, I should take you off the screen. Ah! Okay. Oh, look, you just bounced back. Oh, that's right. You, you could just jump. You're a frog. Okay. Anyway, let's get serious. Eight times 1.35. Okay. Step one. Write the decimal factor as a whole number. Okay. And that was done here, 135. You may recall there was another video where we did that. We called it renaming it, right? As tenths. Two says multiply as with whole numbers. Okay. And are they showing that as an example here yet? Doesn't look like it that I can see. Uh, I guess they are. Here it is. Here they multiply that by 100. We don't know what the answer is yet. And here it says that, oh, we have uh, times 100. Okay. Got that. And then over here it says place the decimal point. Well, think. 100th of 135 is 1.35. So find 100th of 1080 and record the product. And so here it's basically we're going back after we've multiplied this with whole numbers. Now it shows us that, okay, that 100th of that factor is this. And so then we're going to take 100th of that, that 1080. So here we have the 10.80. So a stack of 15 times would have a thickness of, again, we're going to put 10. And we can just put 10.8. The zero is not necessary in this case. So I don't know, I went through this kind of fast. I hope that made sense. Um, you know, we multiplied by 100. That's how we were able to get that to be 135. And ultimately, that means that that's going to be multiplied by 100. Um, something to understand, though, here with this, don't be confused. We multiply this. That would be 40. You, know, you carry the 4, 24, right? And 8 is 28. And you carry the 2, 8, and there's 10. That's how they did that. But they're not taking that product and then multiplying it by another 100. They're just saying that's what we've done. When you increase that 100 times, you're increasing the product 100 times. So here we decreased it 100th, right? And then that's what's happening there. All right, explain how you know the product of 8 times 1.35 is greater than 8. Ooh, I like this. I do like this. Okay, because this means mathematical reasoning here. All right, Frog, should you just stay up there? Okay, you can just stay up there. He didn't want to come. He wants the money. Okay, so uh, I don't know. When I, the first thing on the top of my head, you know, I'm thinking like this, you know, one, kind of a crucial number. One lets me know that if you're multiplying any number at all, just think about those simple ones. Whenever you multiply a number by one, it's it becomes that same number. It's the number that's being multiplied by one. So we call this the identity property of multiplication. And this is true for any number. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, you know, eight times one is eight. So uh, a, a number that would is that is greater than one, and this number is greater than one because it has thirty-five hundredths on there as well, um, would mean that. Uh, the product would be greater than 8. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write those notes in right now. So there you go. I know that 8 times 1 is 8, therefore a number greater than 1, such as 1.35, multiplied by 8 would result in a product that's greater than 8. All right, number 2 says, what if, oh, I like these, what if you multiplied 35 hundreds by 8? Would the product be less than or greater than 8? And explain. Well, again, we can use the exact same uh, reasoning as we did here. If 8 times 1 is 8, right, we already know that, therefore a number that's going to be less than 1, right, such as our number here, which is 35 hundredths, multiplied by 8 would result in a product that is less than 8. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. So here, again, it almost looks like it gets written the same way, but I just copied and pasted it almost because it's the same except that it's going to be less because the number of multiplying is less than one. Therefore, the result is going to end up with a product that is less than eight. 
Okay, there's important stuff here. Yeah. Last little section here is just place the decimal point in the product. All right, so let's just think the place value of the decimal factor is hundreds, and that's true. We had 6.81 times 7, okay, and they're given this number, so they actually haven't completed this, right? So if it is hundreds, it's almost like renaming this. So if we multiplied by 100 here, this way I kind of like to think of it, then we need to divide by 100 here. And I, and I say it divide by rather than just placing it in there so that you understand what's happening to the value. This number will be now one hundredth of the uh, 4,767 because we're going to divide once, twice. So we'll end up with a product here of 47 and 67 hundredths. That would make sense if we did that in reverse. Yoo-hoo! All right. So now we'll do these. So here, they're doing all the multiplication. They just want us to learn about the place value. Okay. All right. I had to multiply by 10. Okay. So I'm renaming this actually as tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's times 10, which means I need, for me, I need to divide by 10. So I bring that right there, and I put 7.4. And then finally over here, we have 19 and 34 hundreds. Again, I can see that there's two decimal places there. So I'd want to rename that as hundreds. But in my product, I would need to divide by 100, bring it right back in, and get 96.70. Well, my friends, here it came to an end. This video went so fast. I don't know, it just makes me sad. It's coming to the end, but not near as sad as that. Country music guy here in the background. Oh my goodness. Bob and Sue, can you turn that step down? Get down. <laughs> I don't know, I can't really do a really can't do a southern voice. I'm not from the south, you know. You may have noticed. Uh, but nonetheless, it's music. I know we have some country music lovers out there. I just happen not to be a big fan of that. So now we've come to the end, which means that's right. I need for you guys to live long and prosper.